Welcome back. Now, as some African countries emerge from civil crises and insurgency, the African Development Bank is supporting those countries with funds to revamp their economies and lift people out of poverty. Countries such as Liberia, Sierra Leone, and other fragile states on the continent will be benefiting from these funds. To tell us more about this is the Director, Transition Support Unit of the African Development Bank Group, Sibri Topsoba, joining us from Abidjan. Hello, Mr. Sibri. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, well, we seem to have lost uh, Mr. Sibri, and we hope to get through to him as soon as possible. Well, in Guinea, the economy expanded by over 8% in 2017 and is on track to grow by around 6% this year on the back of around uh, a rebound in the mining sector. That's according to the International Monetary Fund. The IMF says Guinea's inflation surged to 8.9% in 2017, following the first review of a three-year program agreed the same year. Guinea sought an IMF program hoping to revive its economy, which had struggled due to low global commodities prices and an Ebola epidemic that peaked in 2014 and killed about 11,300 people in West Africa. Guinea recorded a deficit of 1.1% of GDP, in 2017. Well, I guess Mr. Seabree Topsoba is ready now to talk to us. Hello, Mr. Topsoba. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Shimeze. How are you? Very well, thank you. So give us a brief um, overview about how your unit at the a AFDB is supporting the socio-economic development of African states. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. As you know, uh, in the African continent, uh, about half of the population live in, in, in situations of fragility, and that um, is a, a major concern to the African Development Bank. Therefore, uh, we have the transition support uh, department uh, that actually um, has the mandate to help those countries work and get out of that fragility. Uh, we have resources set aside, we have capacity in the bank, and we have an approach that is actually uh, helping the bank slowly but surely um, help the countries get out of fragility. So how much is the um, African Development Bank deploying into these various transition efforts? Uh, for the for the past uh, uh, since uh, 2015, uh, we have uh, invested more than three billion uh, U.S. dollars in those countries. Uh, but it's essentially resources aimed at at, at providing operations that will uh, that that will actually help those countries uh, get out of that fragility. Uh, it's uh, resources. That, that provide additional uh, inputs into water mm. projects, into roads, into agriculture <laughs> projects, but also into the, so the social sector. Uh, but more importantly, and, and I want to st stress this, Chimese, uh, the uh, more importantly, what we are doing is not only the resources, it's the capacity of the countries that we are building, it's also the knowledge and the understanding of the fragility that we are providing that uh, the capacity for those countries themselves to get out of, of fragility. Now, give us some specifics, like um, in Nigeria's troubled north and um, now extending to the food basket and the middle belt. What funding and engagements are you providing? Uh, uh, <laughs> you see, the, the resources that we have are resources that target countries that have been classified as fragile. Now, we, we, we do have a strategy that actually recognizes that some of those countries don't have uh, the, the, the conditions that qualify them for being fragile, but they have pockets of fragility. Uh, Nigeria is, for instance, one of those cases where uh, the, the, the country itself is not classified as fragile by the African Development Bank or by uh, the World Bank or by the 
and is not in the harmonized list of countries, but but Nigeria has pockets of, of fragility that uh, come from the, the recent situations um, of, 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 uh, of Boko Haram, but also in the southern part, uh, in the Niger Delta, uh, where, where we knew that there was some fragile environment. But therefore, because Nigeria is not in the um, in uh, in the, the harmonized list, Nigeria does not qualify for those resources. So what we are doing is we are putting in place a system by which we want to mobilize other partners, in, including bilaterals, to come to provide resources for those places like Nigeria. Also, in case. Uh, in, um, in Cameroon uh, and, 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 and in other countries, we know that the situation is but they don't qualify for the resources that the international community is putting together. Uh, for instance, we have a, 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 an important program that is called the 10,000 Communities in 1,000 Days. And, and we are in every of the countries, including Nigeria, we are trying to mobilize the private sector to provide those solutions to the communities at a cost that is sustainably affordable and, 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 and that can make a difference at the end of the day. So that's how we are working, for instance. I just took the case of Nigeria to illustrate, but for other countries that are already in the list, they get the resources and they, they actually uh, they, 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 they implement those programs. Uh, like I said, could be the 10,000 communities, could be road projects, could be energy projects, could be agriculture projects, could also be women empowerment programs. All right. Thank you very much uh, for your time, Mr. Top Sober. Thank you for your time. That was uh, Sibri Top Sober, the Director of Transition Support Unit of the African Development Bank. And finally, South African telecoms firm MTN Group has reported a 9.1% jump in its revenue for the first quarter of 2018. This has sent the company's shares 5% higher. Revenue at Africa's biggest telecoms firm increased due to growth in Nigeria and Ghana, where voice revenue expanded. MTN says its subscribers increased by 1.9% quarter on quarter with net additions of 4.1 million, while the group's data revenue was up by 26.9%. The group's share price rose as much as 5.74% and later traded up 3.94% at 131 rand in early trade. And that's a wrap on the show for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Chimezi Obi Iwagu.